Hello, everybody, and welcome back to our watchers and listeners um, to the B.O.B. podcast, which is Brown on Brand. I'm with Thumbstopper.com, and we're in the business of connecting brands to their retailers. And today I have uh, some special guests in the studio uh, that also has to do with brands, and we're going to get into that in a minute. But I've got Yo Murphy, Dexter Jackson, and Match Smiths. Welcome, guys. Good to be here, bro. Yeah, thanks for having us. Absolutely. So, uh, man, what brings you guys into the studio? Number one, thank you, right, for coming over. Um, and, it's, and it's a little bit of a rhetorical question. I asked these guys to join us today because I, I want to tell a quick story about um, something that's motivated uh, me over the last few years, and that's you, Yo Murphy. The, um, you know, just getting up early in the morning, coming up over the bridge uh, to where we get down here, and, and our offices are, what, like four or five blocks apart? Yeah. And um, it's amazing to me watching you over three years just kind of put these programs together that have benefited so many people. And, um, you know, not just athletes, which I know is your focus and passion and where your heart's at, but also, you know, executives and professionals like myself uh, and youth programs, um, you know, and, and you've got you know, uh, young children now, you know, I can I think she was a baby yesterday, but yeah. how old is she now? She'll be three, May 20th. Yeah. And so, if, you know, if anybody respects that balance of kind of finding time for business and kids, but I, man, I, I see you up in the morning and you're grinding with these guys down on the, and, and I blow off my air horns and, you know, it's impossible to get you to look up from the clipboard and, <laughs> You know, I, I think a lot of times get, when you're in a leadership position and you got so many people kind of that, that rely on you, you never get to hear. And I'm a critic of people, people that know me personally and people that have been tuned in. Um, I don't like people. I just I don't I don't have a lot of friends. Um, I'm a little bit of a, a, a nerd. Um, and but but one question before we get started is. You know, have you dealt, you've dealt with some big names, some big brands. When you see me in, you know, Aspie performing, um, you know, what level of athlete, like on a zero <laughs> to 10, where do you put me? Is this, I mean, if this is going to affect the rest of what we do, I, I'll, I'll on the podcast. No, no, I, oh, okay. you have you to want be the real deal. I want the okay, real so deal. First real of all, deal. I would never call you an athlete. That's what, oh, first man, of all, I here we go. Do. God, dude, I'm looking for a fucking. Plug. <laughs> no, plug. no plug. Second of all, um, your energy levels are incredible. All right. So I'll give that. Okay. Your nine. nine. Yeah. Your energy levels are nine. Okay. Your um, attention span is a two. Oh. Um, I'll take it. Your responsive <laughs> responsiveness to commands is probably about a two. Oh, wow. You're very I'll, motivated. I'll you know, too. you motivate, you motivate a lot of people when they see you and talk to you. Your jokes are probably a two. Like oh, your no. wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Let's, First of all, nobody can understand. If you, you, if you have to say you get it and then you break it back down, then it's not a good joke. You know what I'm saying? Everyone <laughs> oh that Dude, that. wait a minute. Forget this podcast. This is the roast of Matt Brown. <laughs> right. I mean, I asked for a quick plug and my boy. Um, but to, but to get Other than that, it's great to have you in there. Yeah, man, to get back on topic, and I didn't do a great introduction here because I, right. you know, I just, I like being around Yo, and I've been influenced heavily as a business guy in the last 15 years in, in the Tampa Bay area. And I just, you know, Yo, from one guy to another that's been grinding for years and, and just seeing what it takes and the grit, um, you know, I, I have the utmost respect for you. And, and the reason that I, that I wanted to talk to you uh, today or get you in the podcast is I don't think a lot of people realize the grind an athlete goes through. I mean, it's like entrepreneur is such a sexy thing and developer. And, and yes, I mean, we've been worshiping athletes for years, but I don't think anybody understands those individual guys are brands and yeah. they've got to work on themselves like a brand. And that, yeah. and that's why you and I are in the same business. Yeah, no, it, and I, I agree. And I think what you said earlier, um, about my passion, my passion is, um, you know, and if we're talking brands, I think as a human, you know, we're all brands, right? Absolutely. And I think my passion is about developing human performance or, you know, elevating their brand, their worth. And so it doesn't have to do with an athlete. You know, yeah. I, I, you know, I was, you know, joking with you, but, you know, one thing that you've always done is you've always helped strengthen my business by bringing your staff there by you coming in there you know we joke and you know i'm talking about your motivation it's the best deal your, in the world your it's the best investment i make well, is, and, is and, aspie and for me for you to say that like that's 
that special. You know what I mean? That yeah. means stuff. Like yeah. it's not, I appreciate that. Yeah, no, and I appreciate yeah. you, man. And it's not about me working with Darius Leonard or Stephen Pierce or Kyle Schwarber. It's about that person, and, and I respect my effort with you and yeah. what you've done as much as I do with them. You I never know, know the names of the guys, and I and I don't follow sports a lot, although I was a kid and I played baseball and I played football and I played basketball, and it, it was more of a comradeship, and I, I wasn't that great, right? I mean, yeah. it takes a you know, a special set of genetics and skills and, and, and drive uh, to achieve greatness in sports like anything. Um, you know, but what, what I, what really, I, I've got an intention here today and I always believe that, you know, my, my people want to give us cue cards and things. I never do that. I come into the studio. I want to have conversations about the businesses because I think that's what people are tuned into. So I always say this really in a podcast, this is a, a podcast and a reality show had a baby that, you know, that's what we have here and that's where we're at. But, you know, Aspie, I don't think, you know, I watch Aspie's content uh, and we're in the marketing side of the business, right? And I watch Aspie's content and I see some of these greats that go through that building. And when I find out what their names are and then I put their name to a face, I'm like, holy shit, you know, I'm walking, I'm working out next to this guy and there's a certain level of respect there. But I don't think people understand the piece of Aspie that's that that could benefit from what they do with athletes but these i'm not it's like you pointed out that was a loaded question i'm not an athlete right and it's amazing to me making the investment to go to a program that's focused for the very best and the very elite and be made available to youth right and it's not these aren't expensive programs you know be motivated to come to something you like to be around people like yo murphy and dexter jackson and the staff that you guys have put together i can't tell you the number of trainers you know that have just been influential to our people yeah right and because yeah. they've changed their lives look at gary our marketing guy i'll put him on blast dude looked like shrek <laughs> like 90 days ago <laughs> Right. And now he looks like Fiona. But the, uh, the uh, no, for real, though, I mean, you see that dedication in somebody where and, and you know what he told me last week? He said, I go, dude, you've really um, banging in at 255. And man, you look you look good. And I've been trying to do it. And, and so I see the level of commitment that you're given. And he was like, man, this has changed my life. I've never worked out. Forty, whatever, my age, mid 40s, never worked out. Never worked out. So, um, you know, I see the content that Asp is putting out and I, and man, I'll tell you, they grind through that side of it too. And for those of you who aren't in producing the content business, it's a lot of work. I mean, I just went and picked these, you know, these guys up and brought them over here to the podcast, but putting together the content, the level of stuff you're putting together. But I don't think people get the correlation of that. There's programs available for their children who are in sports that want to elevate their game and that there's programs available for professionals. Because here's one thing I know about athletes. They're not good at marketing. So they can clown on me all they want about not being a good athlete, but I, I got the marketing side of it. Right. And, and, and I, and, and that hopefully that will, you know, help um, make people understand because I, I, I got to tell you, not just for the physical being, but mentally it keeps, it keeps you glued in. I mean, the mental release of just being in a program where somebody's focused on, on uh, making you a better person, making you a healthier person. Correct. Yeah. So oh, Dexter, sure. yeah, Dexter, the, uh, I, when you guys played football, is it the football like the NFL football or is it like the football like the Hispanics play where, where they kick <laughs> the ball? <laughs> When we play football, if he we, comes across, when who the, plays football? When he comes across the table <laughs> on me, dude. When Yo get. comes across the, the 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 beach, I'm gonna try to take him out. You yeah, know, he's a receiver. Uh, it goes way back. Um, uh -huh. We always battle when we play um, football together. Yeah. And you know, now American just, football. Yeah, American, American football. football. Yeah, right. yeah. Pigskin, pigskin, right, right. pigskin. You football. know, and now uh -huh. you know, um, you know, coming back working with Yo. Um, reinvent myself with him and ask me not reinventing myself, but letting people know um, what I'm doing with kids, what we're doing with yeah. kids at Aspie. Yeah. Um, and just I let see Tampa it. Bay, St. Pete, um, this area know what we're doing, how we're growing it. And our goal is to just enhance, enhance these young people when they come see us. Um, and it's more than just working out. You know, Dexter, when I, when I, I see the people that kind of are attached to Aspie and, and the, the amazing poise you know, and, and when I first met you, um, you could just see on you. It's like when I see, yo, you can't tell me this guy doesn't have a bad day. 
right? right. <laughs> but you will never know it about this dude. And you, you come off as having that same aura, you know, just, you know, down there in the beach and we came down there to get the footage and you were the first guy to get in front of the camera and just be clowning. And, and yo had just tried to destroy you in some right. shuffle race. <laughs> right. Right. I'm trying to, I'm trying to better than trying that. to kill him. No, but, trying to but kill him. um, you know, just to, just to kind of give Dex a plug, I've had a lot of people through the building um, that have helped, um, you know, us grow to where we are now. Um, I've never had anybody with uh, more energy, um, outright. Just That's what value, the feeling I get. That's know? the feeling I get uh, when I'm around him. Yeah, it's it's incredible because. How old are you now, Dexter? Old. Can you say that on the air? I'm middle age. Middle age. Oh man, that's just top of middle age. Oh man, that's between forty and ninety. I'm forty-one right now. I'm forty-one. I'm not afraid to say I'm forty-one, but I look good at forty-one. Baby, you make it look easy. I make forty-one look good. Look easy. Look easy. Yeah, you do. Well, you made it look easy on the beach down there earlier. Oh no, he didn't. No, he didn't. I think I did well, man. Dude, you're down there with guys that are nineteen and twenty years old. What do you think? I think I I think I was moving well. You know. um, some of the guys gave me a little porns, but you know, yo try to bust my bubble. Yeah. But um Yeah, he's good I, at that. I challenge that's yo, what he does. I challenge yo in a shuffle race. I uh, bet I could beat yo in a shuffle race. And let's, Matt let's get as back well. On point. Oh, hey. Matt. oh well, yeah, Matt, oh, Matt yeah, Smith. He's talking. Oh, no, oh, I, Matt. I just turned your microphones off. He's talking about <laughs> Matt Smith. <laughs> he's talking about me. <laughs> but when you're talking about Joe, uh, hey, this is a true story. You know the curved <laughs> treadmill that you have? I was in cleats one day, and Yo came around the corner and caught me doing 27 mile an hour on the curved treadmill. <laughs> cleats. In cleats. Cleats. He was falling off the building. Hey. There's no way he's ever moved that fast. So I don't, I don't know. I mean, <laughs> right. you know, however but, you want to tell the story, Dexter, you right. go ahead, Rob. But, but no, nah, Matt, um, what we're trying to uh, develop there, or what we have developed is, um, yeah, it's a place to come work, get better. Yeah. But we want to have an inviting environment. So when yeah, people yeah. come in, we know feel people going to motivate them, make yeah. them feel comfortable. Yeah. And, uh you know, it's the in, in, in my personal opinion, I think it's the greatest the greatest gift uh, playing in the NFL, being able to learn from such great people and giving it back. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, paying it forward, I think that that and, is one. And of the you've been to gifts. the big show. I've been yeah. to the big show. Super we Bowl all MVP. been in the big show. Yeah, Super Bowl MVP. But just being able to give back to the community, I think a lot of that is lost. I see so much of that in the NFL though, still today. Yeah. You know, uh-huh. I, I, you know, stories you don't even read, and you know, recent tragedy, Nipsey Hussle. I mean, I didn't know who he was. Right. Shame on me. And Vaynerchuk right. was following him big, but it's like well, as they're laying this guy to rest, you realize a lot of these guys are giving, they're giving real time and energy back, and they're doing it because they love to do it. Right. It is, you know, it's a it's a catch twenty two. Um, sometimes, uh, what sells? Controversy sells. Yeah. But when you're doing well, a lot of people don't want to hear you doing controversy well. Controversy short term. They want controversy. And life's a they marathon. Want stuff that they can talk yeah. about, you know, in a in a in a in a pool hall or you know just yeah. outside something quick, sporadic. Sure. They can just create a conversation. Over the last 25 years, we've been ingesting that as a society, and it has changed who we are as a people, and not enough people are giving back because we're so into our phones. We're so into the things that I'm behind. It's changed us. Well, Matt, a lot of people give back. It's just not being noticed. Right. People are not glorifying the good part of what people are doing. Um, Well, I'm a witness to what you guys are doing, and that's why... Um, you know, I, I say that this thing touches me because I don't think any of us do enough philanthropy, but I'll tell you when you're grinding 80, 90 hours a week already and you find time uh, for the family and then on top of it, you find time to give back and do good things, that shit's all going to come back to you. Correct. And I, and, I, and I think a lot of the things that we do with the athletes, I mean, you look in our building now, um, you know, we can say whatever level of performance we are, but a lot of things we do as far as You know, this year we had um, Darius Leonard, you know, he's back with us, but he did combine training with us last year. He's rookie of the year. Steven Pierce, who's been training with us for three years, was World Series MVP. Um, We have Keith Thurman, uh, welterweight champ of the world. It's about to start a 10-week camp with us. So what it it enables us to do, Matt, is not only break down our new um, executive program, our old youth program, and base what we do with these high-level athletes on putting each person in a bucket and doing what they need 
for whatever they're trying to accomplish. Yeah, it's amazing. And what I hear from that is is that, you know, people who aren't pro athletes are going to get the benefit of working in the same type of focus and confine is what you're doing with the pro athletes. And, and that has been the direct benefit for us. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so it's not an expensive product, you, uh, you know, and welcome, Matt. I'm sorry. Yeah, Matt, I feel like we've Matt's left Matt out. Youth, Matt's, yeah. in, Matt's in charge of the youth. You right. can slide that microphone back over. We're sharing microphones in the podcast today. So, right. Right. well, no problem. I mean, usually I'm in the background between these two. So, yeah. You know, oh yeah. How can you not be? Right. <laughs> so, so, so me. tell us about, tell us about the youth program. I mean, like what's your, what's your wheelhouse in the youth program? Right. Well, we're, um, that's one thing we're in the middle of doing right now is really changing kind of our emphasis on what we're doing with youth. And instead of it being you come to us and we have these, you know, elite packages, which we're still going to do, now we're getting more out into the community and seeing how can we help you in any which way possible. Focused on specific athletes or any type of athlete. So any and every. I mean, these, these guys played American pigskin. And, <laughs> right. and so we're talking any type of athlete. Correct. Yeah. I mean, a lot of the. Just basic skills, dynamic movement, you know. What just, age groups? We work, probably our youngest will be eight, you know, that we okay. have in the pro program right now. Yeah. Um, we might have camps that reach younger kids than that, but as far as memberships, our youngest is around eight. Uh, how, how would one reach out to ASPE, right? They, we've got a website. Correct. Right. Yep. Is it, and and is that how you want people to come through? Yo, shaking his head. No, they you know, he's like any business owner. Let me tell you something. It doesn't matter how good your website is. You're flipping out about it all the time. So welcome to the club. Yo. But how how would uh, you know, how do you want people to, you know, learn about the Aspie program or, or talk? Who would they talk to? All right. Well, hopefully um, we're out in the community enough where they're talking to us a lot, you okay. know, especially the decision makers. Of, but our but our but listeners, if, if, if I can't right, yep. give me Matt's email. Correct. You okay. can email what myself. is your email? It's M Schmitz, M S C H M I T Z mm -hmm. at the Aspie.com. At the ASPI.com. So M Schmitz at the ASPI.com. Right. Yeah. Okay, great. So they could reach out any parents, coaches. Um, and are you looking for groups, individuals? Both? Both. Everything. Uh, both. Okay. So you're yeah. looking to work with kids that have passion about being better athletes. Yeah, right. We have we have programs set up for both. Um, a lot of the things that we'll do out in the community are um, our speed and skills clinics, um, mentorship, a lot of stuff. Dex is doing um, team training. Okay. In the building is a lot. We're still doing group training. Um, we have we have team packages in the building, but that's more of our individual classes that is athlete development or weight loss. You know, all the things are more individual based. Yes. Um, but in the community, um, we'll have so many things with. Um, not only Dex, but we have some other high-level um, Hall of Fame guys. Uh, Randy Moss has been working with us these past couple of years. Uh, Derek Brooks, uh, Booger McFarland's not Hall of Fame, but, um, you know, played a lot of years, talks a lot, so yeah. we like to use Big. Um, yeah, yeah, he's a character. <laughs> he, he's one that makes me want to go trainer. jump off a bridge. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> if, if I'm not feeling bad about myself that day, I'll tell you, a boat can destroy me. Yeah, he thinks he's a trainer for some reason, so it's uh, we've been he, trying. I'll to tell you what, he's tore up two or three of your bicycles over there in the corner. <laughs> yeah. We got to edit that out of book sees that shit. He'll beat me to death. When you see Booger asking about his sprinter legs, oh yeah, I'll tell him, hey man, don't beat me, Dicks. You're asked about your sprinter legs. <laughs> the uh, so I've I've got a, a question that might be beneficial to people, but I, I'm just curious, and I don't even know how to ask it correctly, other than. You know, yo, or, or Dexter or Matt, what, you know, what if I'm a, what if I'm an executive, I've been in the trenches, I beat up my body, and I've got kind of the wherewithal that I would want to be like one on one with a, with a guy like yo Murphy, or a guy like Dexter Jackson, if I wanted to, if I wanted to allocate some of their time, do you have a program that people could inquire about? that might be what a professional athlete would subscribe to because that's what it's about. A block of this guy's time or this guy's time is expensive. However, they've kind of canned these programs together where I hear things might be more affordable than what a typical person might think for their child. And for the executive that doesn't want to necessarily get in a group, I don't have time or whatever, or, or maybe you can be flexible. Can somebody talk to me about it? Is there a program for that? Yeah. So, you know, what we're talking about is a little bit of, just the exact care that we do with athletes. So we have a program called Aspie Select, and and that's where you come in and you do extensive testing from biomechanical, um, a 
power. What's that mean? What's biomechanical? Biomechanical is basically how you move. You know, uh, how I do everything that I do. Is um, a helmet involved? <laughs> no, no. I mean, <laughs> you, you, we will slow. You may be. How about them pants I see where people slide into and it compresses them? I've been, <laughs> I didn't know if that was the bottom of a love doll or what. Okay, we're going to have to edit that out. My bad. So back to the program. Uh, so, uh. Biomechanical is just how the body moves, all right. And we want my make, jokes weren't good. They're not. I mean that that one I would I like that one, but most of them you you, you make. I me promise stop. I won't interrupt again if you don't clown on me right here okay. about my jokes. Okay, right, so all right. biomechanical. <laughs> all right, if you interrupt again, I'm I'm clowning. All right, I'm not gonna interrupt. <laughs> so uh, it's 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 about how you move. So what we were talking about is human performance. Even if I'm not trying to run down a field, you know, as fast as I can and cut or hit. Um, there's still ways that I want my body to move. So um, it's basically anti-aging. You know, as I okay. get older, I need muscles. I need to support my body. You're talking about... So the ideology of losing flexibility, is that it's, part it's, of it? It's all of it. Losing strength means I'm losing movement, okay. you know? Um, yeah. So uh, when I'm hunched over a computer, I need to focus on posture. I need to yeah. really focus on my... And that's a focus, posterior. right? Fixing yeah. your posture. Yeah, because yeah. yeah. all executives, like you said, I'm yeah. either traveling, I'm sitting, I'm... Yeah. Working on a computer, my hours and my hours. Right. I'm using losing a lot of uh, hormonal support because mm -hmm. of stress, because of adrenals, because of thinking. You know, okay. people say get sleep. Well, I can't get sleep. I so there's a that. science behind this, yeah. and, and yep. science is in the name. Yep. We never said what's ASPI stand for. Applied Science and Performance Institute. Right. So there's a lot of science in this yep. too. This and is I, not just a bunch of hey, we write some things on a board. This is well thought out. This is science. And engineering, and that's yep. what this is about. Yep. And, and I think uh, intentful. So what we've talked about with our athletes, what we talk about with our executives, with our youth, is to make change, you stress the body. All right? So yep. if I get smarter, I stress my brain. I got to sure. focus. If I get stronger, I stress my muscles. But you only want to make sure you're, you're stressing what you need, right? So I don't want to... I don't want to have that's somebody gold. train more than they need. You that's know? gold. And so right that's, what we're, that's what our focus is. So if I can test you, understand you from nutrition to biomechanically to flexibility to strength, whatever we're, we're working on, cognitive, now I can build a better mat. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And so what we do is ASPE Select is about our executives yeah. built on this program. Man, I'm really a two when it comes to motivation. Two. Is that it? Was that a joke or an interruption? <laughs> no, neither. <laughs> that was a serious question. And I waited till you no, finished. No, I said motivation. You're a nine. Your jokes were a two. Oh, my joke. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yes. Yeah. I'm still yeah. ringing from that, too. Yeah, a yeah. two, man. I, I bring heat. No, you've, right. you've I wish I had me. one clean enough you've, to do on the air right now. I'd drop it on the <laughs> listeners, and they would spill, spill anything they're drinking or eating. You know, I kind of I want to get back um, to just one last segment, and it might be a piece of a segment, or it might be... But, um, you know, I, I watch you, um, you know, focus on athletes, and Dexter's probably a great one to contribute to this too. And I always wonder, um, you know, I had a whole different feeling about athletes in general and pro athletes until I was around them at ASPI. And then I realized most of these guys are just like normal dudes and cool mm -hmm. dudes, and, and it didn't matter, you know, what their net worth was. and. And some of them have very big net worths and some of them don't. Um, but I, I, you know, in the business world, sometimes, you know, that gets in the way is that that ego. But I, I find with athletes, they balance it better than anybody. Is, is that a is that a good perception all across the board? Or do you get some, you know, fucking assholes, too? Yeah, you do. But I think I, I think what you said hits home. You know, when I was playing, I didn't really have as much interaction with business executives. I just think they get a bad rap. I well, think to Dexter's point, I, you know, like politics and everything else, I think they're always looking for the athlete that might have fucked up and oh, you don't no, realize no. how many thousands of athletes those guys are, you know, they're yeah. fucking glued together and these yeah. guys are Correct. good stewards of their communities and give yeah. them back. And I just, I don't know if you guys can be honest about the, the perception or whether you have a comment, but, you know, just being around it at ASPI, different levels of it. I found that they do a better athletes do a better job than with their morals and kind of how they act. Um, you know what I've seen better than executives do, or better than the average Joe in an office. And so I didn't. I don't know if you got a lot of assholes that you train or. I mean, yeah, you can say it, man. Them. They're not going to know. Gonna, You're not. They're know. not going to know if you no, say, "Yeah, I, I got this one asshole. I, I He's mean, got most, red most hair." Most guys that know 
are most guys that I would say are assholes know I think they're assholes. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like we don't. Oh yeah, you do have we, that about you. We don't. We don't right. have to. Uh, we we're not in the business. That we have to train everybody. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm. So I, you'll say no. Oh, 100 percent. I won't take a guy one on one. Good. Um, so your deal is, is yeah, they're assholes and anything, but I'm not going to I'm not yeah, going to yeah. I'm if they're not going to give it and they're not going to be respectful, then I'm not going to, uh, you know, accommodate that. Yeah. We've we've kicked guys out of our combine program probably every year except the last two where it's been a guy won't work a guy. One guy tried to beat up one of my trainers like, you know, we got guys getting a fight. We kicked them both out. So I I don't think that. um <laughs> I think if you get into a situation wow. where you have, when I first got into this, I had to train everybody. I mean, yeah. I'm training anybody that would come yeah. like, for 20 yeah, bucks. Yeah. Now I'm in a situation where um, all that did was help support um, my path to get to my vision. Yeah. Where we're at. Well, my it's mission. taught you a lot of things too, right? Absolutely. Where you're going, dude, yeah. life is too short yeah. to take yeah. the small buck. Yeah. And, and this thing is a marathon. I've seen you guys just grinding for the last uh, few years and, and you know, the programs out there, I, I, you know, I, I wish um, that there was a marketing company, a local, that would look at ASPI. And, and I've seen a lot of marketing people in and out of this building. And I think um, they're like me and I have pain uh, from this. I've had two dozen marketing people work for me uh, in, in the last 24 months and 10 of them were horrible. They were <laughs> bullshit artists. They were long on talk and short on execution. And um, I'm personally going to get involved in helping create some content and maybe with some things that we're learning from Gary Vaynerchuk and VaynerMedia. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to make it a mission uh, and do a little philanthropy for you guys, number one, because I got the utmost respect for you, Yo Murphy. Uh, and what little I know about Dexter, uh, you know, I, I feel like he's the same type of dude. Yeah, Dexter, you got something, brother? Yes, Matt. Um, just, you know, two things I want to touch on. Number one, um, working in the mental health field a lot. We mm -hmm. have a lot of kids who's um, obese, different okay. type of diseases, um, high okay. blood pressure. And a lot of that is kids are being lazy, just playing video games all the time. And one of the things that well, my vision at Aspie as well is not necessarily be athletes. Let's get kids moving again. Amen. Because this obesity thing with kids. Is, Dude, I'm so it's glad you brought that up. Now. So, um, I'm so glad you brought that up. One thing we're trying to do on one of our visions is getting kids out, playing, maybe have something on the beach on Saturdays, Sundays. But we need to get kids moving again. Amen. Um, at this point, to be 9, 10, 11 years old, have high blood pressure, diabetes. Uh, I think something's wrong with that picture. And I feel like those are some of the things that we will bring to Aspie. Um, not being an athlete, but having fun moving, you know, it relieves. Uh, That's the most genuine relieves, thing that I've felt on this podcast. It relieves so much, you know, um, with my mental health background, I saw so many kids coming in with different type of ailments, anger issues, behavior issues, no coping skills. And the more I studied and looked and looked into it, a lot of the kids didn't have no outlet to, re to, to relieve that anger. Sure. Or relieve that depression. Sure. Well, running around, sweating, having fun, um, then the sun open your pores, it relieves so much negative stuff that I'm built up in you. So those are some of the things that um, myself and along with Matt and yo at Aspie, we want to get kids coming out just moving again, having fun. I'm so glad you brought that up because yeah, I'll tell you what, sure. that would have this would have been a different segment, Dexter, right. if you didn't bring that up and talk about the people that need it. And I'll speak to that. Um, we're a dev shop. You guys have seen some of the, the people that I've motivated to get in ASPI. And, um, you know, I'll talk about it. The guy's name is Zach. He's a developer. He'd love to come in here and probably sh share a story. I might have him do it as part of the segment. But it's a it's a guy that had been abusive to himself and, not, right. you know, not done anything. And, that, and you find yourself in right. that rut. But as a child, it, it, it causes some mental it, things it does. Like that can and be released. It's, and if you look and around And you say your now, background, do you mean that that's what... Is I that did a lot of mental health. In? Yes, um, I did a lot of mental health. I always wanted to touch kids. Um, when I was well, that's a different story. I saw some <laughs> things happen when I was younger. What and, uh, uh, what, what was your uh, what was your um, my major, major was yeah. family family childs and consumer science working with um, runaways, domestic behavior issues, kids. Sure. Um, so um, I like to 
touch the, the kids. Yeah, yeah. Um, one of my quotes I love to say, I don't I don't know, this kid might have a cure for cancer and save my life or save my wife or my kids' life down the road. Yeah. I don't know that. So you believe in everybody. I believe in everybody. You believe someone everyone should me. have a chance. Uh, someone gave me a shot, so why not? And if does that come? Does that come from somebody very early on that affects? It does. Well, that, that it comes with morals. You know, being taught what life is really about. Yeah. A lot of people think life is about making all the money, partying, and having fun. But it's not about always making the money. My life is about I'm not gonna look at my wife and kids, and I see they're happy to see dad at home. Cause money comes and goes, but your your kids, your wife, your family. Being around for them, being healthy, um, I think that's is something that is priceless. So um, back to the mental health part, though, we want to um, touch these kids, get them out, get them moving, um, burning energy. Because um, you think about it, a, a, a grown person can't sit down for six hours straight and and just not do anything. He has to move as well. So some of these kids are sitting down so much, not doing anything, playing all these video games. We need to get kids back out being kids again. Yeah. That's lost. <clears throat> Dude, that's the best thing I've heard in like that that was uh soul food right there. Mm -hmm. You know, just and and I think ending on that note uh just goes to speak why I asked these guys to come over here with ASPI. And you can tell when things are genuine. Hold on, that's uh not me. Who was that? You're right, in trouble. Dex. That was Dex. Wrong. Yeah. See, man, you do. After all that, you hey, bring you know that what? you but bring you know that what? heat, and then but you, you know blow what? it up with a phone. See, that's what happened when you when you, when, when when people see you doing great things, they, they want to talk job. instantly, mm -hmm. so they start calling in. There we go. <laughs> if we open up the phone lines, we'll be surprised how many calls we'll have. Yeah, I know. So don't be afraid. I told you to turn off the phone lines. Dexter Jackson's in the house, and we could. He blew up our PBX system. <laughs> Right. So, hey, guys, thanks a lot. This was a, a lot of fun, and it's a program I believe in. And let me tell you something. When somebody's in the same business as me, and that is, uh, you know, building brands, I learned some things today. Hell, everybody's a brand. It's like Yo Murphy said. I was thinking of athletes as brands, but he's exactly right. And Dexter, thank you for the, you know, kind of the closure there with the, the, the kids that need it most. Right. Uh, and, and, again, I'm a big believer in ASPI. So uh, thanks a lot. All right, thank, thank you. you. Appreciate it, brother.